Hey, what's going on guys? So I've been doing this YouTube and teaching thing for a while. And one thing I've noticed is a lot of people think that they need to learn absolutely everything when it comes to web development. You know, they'll watch channels like this and, and see that I have crash courses on React, Vue, Django, Laravel, newer stuff like HTMX, and they think that they need to become an expert in all this stuff. And I know part, part of that might be my fault, but every chance I get, I try to explain that you don't have to learn everything that I teach. My channel is there as a catalog for you to look for the things that you want or, or need to learn. It's not a linear guide, and I think that a lot of people have a tough time understanding that, not just with my channel, but with, with everything out there, all the YouTube channels and courses. And there's nobody on the planet that can learn and, and master every technology. And in the real world, what's, what's going to benefit you most is to specialize. And the only place where this might not be true is with someone like me that is a content creator. You know, I can be kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. That's what I refer to myself as. I know a, a little about a lot. And this allows me to expand my catalog. But if you're not teaching or, or creating content, you, you want to do a bit of research and testing to figure out what you what you want to specialize in and then stick with that. Now, there's going to be multiple technologies that you need to learn. This, this is going to include like a language, a framework, database, ORM. Um, this is called a tech stack. And of course, there's going to be all kinds of, of, you know, smaller libraries and APIs that you need to learn as well. But there's no reason to waste your time learning and trying to master React, Vue, and Svelte all at the same time. They, they pretty much do the same thing, you know, and I'm using front-end frameworks as an example, but you could, it could be anything, you know, you, you could be learning both Rust and Golang or Laravel and Django, which doesn't really make sense. Now, it's good to experiment. This is why I create crash courses. They're, they're relatively you know, beginner-based courses to get your feet wet and, and see how these technologies work. And then after you experiment, you choose a path. And this is, this is why I do that annual guide every year is to kind of show you the options. Now, a lot of people think, well, it, you know, if I learn four frameworks, then I can apply to a ton of jobs looking for developers that use those frameworks. And that's true. Uh, you can apply, but the chances are that you're you're not going to know enough of that one framework or language because you've been splitting your time into three or four different parts. In the real world, specializa specialization it really reigns supreme, and that's what employers are looking for. Now, let's address a, a common misconception, and that's the idea that that quantity equals quality in the tech learning sphere, and it's not about racking up certificates or, or boasting about how many language that you've you how many languages you've dabbled in instead it's about depth and understanding you know think of it like like building a house you, you wouldn't want a, a contractor who's laid a few bricks here and there to construct your dream home you'd want someone who's mastered the craft and and really knows the the ins and outs of every tool and can anticipate challenges before they actually arise and similarly, uh, employers seek developers who can tackle complex problems, not someone who's stretched thin across multiple technologies. Again, that's not to say that you shouldn't explore different tools. Just watch the amount of time that you put into things that won't really benefit or contribute to your end goal. Also, it's really important to mention that if you, if you master React, and again, I'm just using front-end frameworks as an example, but if you master React, picking up Vue or Angular or Svelte is gonna be pretty simple. So if at any point you do find an opportunity to work with something else that's similar, you can switch over. Again, just using JavaScript frameworks as an example, it could be absolutely anything. Lastly, I, I wanna look at some steps that you can take to, to learn how to specialize. So first, I would say identify your interests because specialization begins with introspection. What aspects of web development are you passionate about? Are you drawn to front-end design, um, back-end architecture, or the intricacies of database management? Identifying your interests is, is the first step towards specialization. You don't want to specialize in something that you have no interest in. You, you're not going to get that far. Next, you want to do some, some uh, market research 
And once you've pinpointed your interests, you research the current demand in the job market and in your area, um, this is really important because certain technologies are more prevalent in certain areas. So find out what's really popular and what kind of market trends are around where you're going to live and work. So third, I'd say choose your focus with your interests and um, market demand in mind. Choose a focus area for specialization. This could be a specific language, JavaScript, Python, uh, a framework like React, Django, or a niche skill like cybersecurity, e-commerce development. Um, you know, I think selecting a focus really allows you to direct your learning efforts effectively. And then fourth, deep dive into your chosen field. So immerse yourself into whatever it is that you're you're choosing as your field, um, and and find courses and tutorials, documentation, engage with online communities. The goal is to become a, a, a subject matter expert in that area of specialization. So fifth, build a portfolio. As you learn to build more, uh, showcase your skills through a portfolio of projects. Your portfolio serves as tangible evidence of your capabilities um, to you know, potential in, employers or clients. And then six, I'd say stay updated. The tech landscape is always evolving to a point where it's just obnoxious. Uh, so it's essential to kind of stay updated on emerging trends and advancements within your specialization. And lastly, network and collaborate. I think networking is a vital aspect of career growth in any field. So connect with professionals, um, you know, LinkedIn, attend meetups and workshops, and this can open up new, you know, doors to new opportunities. All right, so uh, I hope that this could give you guys some kind of guidance. I know breaking into the industry is getting more difficult by the day. Um, that's why it's, it's really important to try to master and specialize. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.